Hello, and thank you for joining our EU live session on Reconnecting Rivers. It's my pleasure to present this short video today on behalf of some of our Life Project beneficiaries who are working hard to restore freshwater habitats across Europe, and in doing so, improving the conservation status of some of Europe's most endangered fish species. Two reports published in 2020 highlighted the catastrophic 93% decline of freshwater migratory fish in Europe between 1970 and 2016. And that European rivers are the most fragmented in the world with over 600,000 barriers recorded on rivers and streams, leading to the loss of critical biodiversity and driving fish and other freshwater species to extinction. Evidence suggests that removal of just 732 of these barriers along the larger rivers in Europe could allow reconnection of 11,500 kilometres of river, meeting almost 50% of the Biodiversity 2030 strategy target of 25,000 kilometres. Let's now take a look at some of the life projects who are removing barriers to fish passage and contributing to that target. Many of our migratory fish start their reproductive journey in the sea and the first barrier they may encounter is on the coast. The Fish Migrate and BirdLife project in the Netherlands set out to restore the migration pathway between the Vodensee and the Ijsselmeer estuary, where coastal structures made it impossible for fish to access the breeding grounds. The Fish Migration River recreates the natural conditions and when it's low tide, fresh water flows from the Ijsselmeer to the Vodensee, attracting the fish by the smell of the river so they can find the entrance. The project will benefit a range of fish like lampreys, shad, salmon, hooting, sturgeon and eels, which swim in during low tide following the smell and taste of the river. The sluice gate is always open, except in periods of bad weather. Then the dike is closed with a storm surge barrier. Once inside, the fish make their way down the four kilometre long artificial river which allows the fish to slowly get used to the fresh water. Within five years of completion, they hope that 70% of fish that were halted by the sluice gate will successfully reproduce upstream in large rivers such as the Rhine. Even where there's no barrier between the sea and the river, urban developments, such as our next project in Vesteras, Sweden, show how urbanisation poses a different set of challenges to fish migration. Life Rich Waters is an integrated project with many different actions and activities, including the turbine bridge at Vesteras, which houses a small hydropower plant in the heart of the city. This turbine house was constructed in 1891 to produce electricity and has historical importance for the town. There have been discussions for decades about the need for a fish migration passage at the power plant. This is the first migration barrier on the river and there are many species of fish that want to migrate upstream to reach their natural spawning areas but can't. The big challenge in the city centre is that there is no place to redirect the water during reconstruction, so the project needed to develop a series of strategies in case of heavy rainfall or snow melt. Originally, there was one large floodgate, which has now been replaced with a weir dam, releasing water automatically through the dam construction via the fish passage. The passage is the best compromise between demolishing the dam and building a passage, allowing fish to migrate and still produce vital energy. The fish pass benefits many species from common things like perch to target species for conservation like the asp. And the townspeople love it. The River Severn is the largest river in England and has one of the largest tidal ranges in the world at 13 metres. This presents a new set of challenges 
which the Unlocking the Seven for Life project is solving through major engineering works. Let's hear directly from the project. Fish migration was severed about 180 years ago with the construction of the locks and weirs to facilitate navigation. The Twait Shard population crashed almost overnight and it has led it to be one of the UK's rarest fish today. We're building four big fish passes. Diglett, the biggest, at a massive 100 metres long, 8 metres wide and 5 metres deep, is the biggest deep vertical slot in England and Wales and has a unique underwater river viewing gallery. The fish pass is formed of a series of ascending pools that take the fish in manageable steps from one level at the bottom of the weir to the higher level above it. This year, for the first time in nearly 180 years, Twait Shad will be able to pass and get upriver to their historic spawning habitats where they'll have a better chance of reproducing. This fish pass will also benefit other endangered fish species, including salmon, eel and lamprey. From the longest river in England to the longest river in the European Union. Here, with land to spare, the Austrian Life Trajan Plus project reconnects a portion of the river, which had been straightened during the construction of a power plant, back to its original floodplain. The modified canal-like river was of little ecological value, with ramps that obstructed fish migration. The goal of the project was to create a new, sustainable river with the support of the surrounding landowners. The project excavated 1.5 million cubic metres of gravel to create the new riverbed and to recharge the Danube riverbed sediments. The extensive construction work along 10 kilometres of new river took three years. The old canalised river is now only used as a flood drain. Three phases of construction were built and flooded one after the other. They quickly developed all on their own and wetland plants soon made themselves at home in the newly created areas. The nutrition meanders its way along, providing river habitats with flood zones, shallow and deep areas, gravel banks and driftwood, attracting a wide range of species, including fish like the endangered Danube salmon, a rare fish which has now returned to the Tracian and multiplied. The new Tracian has achieved good ecological status in record time. Not all projects need to be innovative and creative with designs. Sometimes demolition works just as well as the Life Supriva project designed to provide connectivity for suprinid fish illustrates. The Yelka de Yeltes Dam was constructed in 1959 to provide energy to surrounding villages. It's one of the main barriers to fish migration in the region. The function has been superseded now by new infrastructure and it's now redundant and needed to be demolished. The project completely removed the structures and constructed a weir with a fish pass and an interpretation centre. After four days of demolition work, the final gates were removed and the river could begin to run freely. After only one week, river connectivity had been restored and species could begin to swim upstream. Some species could be detected upstream for the first time in decades, even while demolition was still in progress. At the end of the works, the project had completely removed the barrier restoring 95% of connectivity to the river. And finally, not all rivers are big and not all structures are massive. Our last project in Wales shows that small can also be beautiful. Many rivers are blocked by old weir structures. This boulder weir on the River Dee is over 100 years old and has been redundant for many years. The weir prevents sediments moving upstream to downstream, which degrades downstream habitats where fish may want to spawn. Restoring the correct flow 
by removing the boulders provides stability in the sediments and improves the habitat, restoring connectivity. Thank you for watching and thanks to all our wonderful life projects for contributing. You can find out more about these and other life projects by visiting them online.